Come on, let's over here for a second. Just for one second. I'm going to have a little conversation with Kelly Clay. So, who knows today's date? Today's the 11th. 11. The 11th. So, Mr. James, how long have we been doing this project? Since uh, last week, uh, right, the week before November, November, right? Yep. And so, we've been doing it for about six weeks, eight weeks, right? And Kelly, I'm going to answer the slide this way a little bit. So yeah, with well, the holidays, we're talking about this, like, this part is an eight session. About eight sessions. Okay. So eight sessions, that's eight weeks. Any idea who remembers how long it takes to create a habit? Ninety, 90 days. days. Ninety days, right? Some people say sixty. I say I say it's actually probably 120, 90. Right? So six weeks is how many I always ask my brainiac. How many, how many days? days? Forty two days. So we're halfway there to creating some habits. We don't know what they are yet. But we're creating some change, right? Um, so what I have, what I found out was Kelly's our star student this week or this month because she had a rocking month. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. And I had a little free conversation with, with Kelly because I said, I said to James, I go, you know, instead of me interviewing people you don't know and don't have experience with, like my friend Michael, even though he's a rock star, that didn't happen overnight. I remember Michael when he was like kind of like not shy, but he really wasn't all that more back then. Neither was I. Um, we all started somewhere. And for, through coaching, mentoring, and a lot of self reflection, if you will, um, sometimes, you know, and, and I'm going to allude to this in a second. When I asked Kelly, I said, Hey, I, I want to talk with you. She said, Well, about what? And you guys know Kelly, right? Oh, my God. What did I do wrong? <laughs> and when I, when I said, Hey, you know, James said you had a walk in month. What, you know, oh, I didn't say that. I said you're getting, we're getting better. <laughs> making it different. We're making it different. Well, listen, to me, one of one. Walk. If, you, if you did more, if you did, more, if you did one after production increased by more than 100%. Right. So it's more than zero. It's more than zero. I got it. Sure. Let's just put it this way. Um, let's put it this way. So it's up from where it was, and it's up, in my, in my opinion, substantially. Okay. And why do I say substantially is anything more than you don't change who you are, you change who you're being. I'll say that again. You don't change who you are, you change who you're being. So if, if I take a leash and I put you in a new car, right? You're in a new car, man, you're excited, you drive down the road, and you're like, dude, I'm, I'm so cool. You walk down the window, the guy you stop at the light, the guy's looking at you, you're like, yeah, man, new car. <laughs> right? You guys get married, you buy a new house, right? Move into the new house, you're excited, you want people to come over, you're doing the whole thing, your friends are coming in, they're like, yeah, man, we're, you know, we're doing it. The funny thing is, is in that space between the five inches, and we talk about playing golf, and he's probably one of the best guys I've ever seen at it, by the way, is golf takes place, and my kids always say, Dad, why do you play golf? It's like, you're torturing yourself. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know, I don't need your help. <laughs> um, but, you know, and I always say to him, I said, you know, golf is a funny game. It takes place in a five-inch span. It's the only game that the ball doesn't move. So if you play baseball, somebody's throwing the ball at you, and you have the momentum of the ball coming at you. When you play golf, the only person you have is the little voice in your head. And Mike and I have talked about this before, which is your ego. And when I play, and Mr. Chu has played with me in golf tournaments, and he's seen how I putt when it's important, I jump. <laughs> I've gotten better at it over the years because now I've started to figure out how to talk to the voice in my head. Which is that voice that says, you can't make this part. Oh my God, do you have any idea what's going on? And now I've actually said, you know what, I appreciate your opinion, but I'll, I'll squeeze your head if I need it. Let me go putt. Right? And then I just turned that off. But we talked about this. And Kelly, what do you think made the biggest difference in the past, I don't know, 30 days? Just being focused and setting my priorities. So tell me more about that. Like, what, what's one thing that you can say that you. That you What's one thing you made a you made a conscious decision to say, hey, I'm gonna change this. I don't like I don't like the one being. I can just say you have a Tuesday. <laughs> oh, that, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. So what what's something in your control? So after I come see you every Tuesday, I have that long drive home and mm -hmm. long drive home to work. And there's a lot of times I think and even though you go over things, 
maybe at another time I've heard that before, but maybe it's not as clear. Or um, so, just reevaluating everything that I come see you every week and refocus and. Um, Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You've had somebody tell you before to call your past customers. Yeah. You've had somebody tell you to follow up with people you know. Yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah. So, so these things are not new, but just having someone remind you and just saying, yeah, you forgot to do that. So it's. Is it forgot or is it just hey, you know what? I, I, I didn't realize. I didn't realize I should be doing that at the same time. So what what's the um, let me ask you this of the people you talk to where where did the business where did the new business come from? Just going out, networking, talking to people. Right. Um, so when we talk about a perfect ten, right? And for the for the rest of you guys, for people who don't know what we're talking about, the perfect ten, right? Perfect 10, right? What's our perfect 10? We got one, two, three, right? And our 10 is the perfect 10 people that we're going to talk to, right? Our perfect customer, our ICP, right? The people that we're actually targeting. And of that, I always say that there's there's going to be a group of them that are going to be past customers. There's going to be a group of them that are going to be your new customers, right? And then there's going to be a group of them that are going to come from what I'm going to call VIP partner, okay? All right, that's not spelled right. We'll try to spell it right. So if I and I always say is that on the perfect ten, what's the numbers? Anybody remember? Two, two, and two. Two, two, two and two. Two here, two here, and two here. Why two, two, two? Because that gives you six a month, which is seventy-two a year, which right. uh, exactly. But numbers. why why two is because. We're not going to get 100%. We're only going to get 20%. Remember that old rule, right? 80-20 rule? So let's look at the 80-20 rule, right? So Kelly, out of curiosity, I'm just curious myself, any idea where those transactions came from? Or any of them? Or any of them past customers? Yeah. How many? Um, or how much of a percentage? Let's do it that way. I don't know. 50%. Okay. But you've been in the business for how many years, Kelly? 20 years. 20 years. So let me ask you guys a question. We've talked about this. Are her numbers going to be the same as your guys' numbers? No. Are they going to be the same as your numbers? No. Are they going to be the same as his numbers? No. Right. And remember with Ruth Boniface, we were talking, and I said, Ruth, how many years? We've known each other 25 years. And I said, Ruth's numbers will probably be 50 to 60, 50 to 75 percent past customer signing info. I'm going to challenge you on that, though. Because even though you're in debt and like, even like him, I challenge him on it to say, yeah, I'm sure, I get 85% of my business from my past customers. Okay, great. So that business comes to you anyway. Let's try for let's try for 90 days to forget about that business and just touch it to get it to come in. But let's forget about that to come to you even coming in. Let's try to do the same amount of business this month with that in addition. So instead of instead of us going, I'm either doing this or I'm doing this. Or I'm either spending this plate or I'm spending this plate. You can have your cake and eat it too. Spin both plates at the same time. You guys understand what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. right. So Kelly, where the other 50% come from? Networking. Networking. So these, these guys down here, right? Was it all down here or was there any of it new? New. How much of it new? Any of them? I don't remember. Was any of the were any of the applications people you had no idea they were referred to you by one of these real people? Real estate agents. By a real estate agent. Okay. So down here. Right? So this is an opportunity for us. What do I mean by an opportunity? She's starting to get this figured out, right? Would you agree with me? Mm -hmm. Starting to get this figured out, right? Would you agree with me? Right? So here's an opportunity that we haven't figured out yet. By the way, this is what we're going to be talking about today. Okay? Yep. So, Kelly, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, I'm going to do a little exercise today with Mr. Chu. He's going to be my uh, mortgage guy, as always. Okay. Anybody see my uh, my Facebook uh, post? Mm -hmm. What did it say? Uh, you're doing the uh, the hard seventy five. Oh, uh, that that too. Yeah. <laughs> that's why. I'm, that's why. I'm, oh, as I'm bending down. Um, thank you for noticing everything on my day forty one. But I'm doing something else. 
doing a I'm doing an ad campaign called Tired of Renting. Right? Anybody seen that? So first of all, if you're not following me on Facebook, you should. And I don't need you as followers. I have like four or five thousand people following me already. So it's not it's not a matter of my ego saying, hey, you should follow me. I'm saying that you follow me because I am doing exactly what I'm teaching you. I am doing the things. I am not. I am not one of those te- one of those mentors that says, "Here's what you should do, and here's what I'm going to do." While you're doing that, I'm going to go drinking. No, I'm doing the things I'm telling you to do. Why? Because I want to make sure it works. So I wrote down today, right? The renting versus owning. Overall, what we're trying to do: learn to create an interest, value, inspiring, lead conversion to help people to think and get excited and decide. What's the point of that ad that says, I'm tired of renting? Any idea? Any idea? Well, you're catching people's attention that hate, you know, paying high rents. Right. And it's monthly. Kelly, what am I trying to accomplish today? Get consumers to contact you to buy. Consumers to contact me. Would you guys agree with me we're in a contact sport? What's a contact sport? Football, rugby, real estate, mortgages. All right, get in touch with them. All right, we talked about this, right? Buyer, seller, mortgage. Get in the way. Get in the middle, right? So, tactical tools. Who are we going after? All right? So first of all, who? Right. First thing I did was I did an ad. I just did it without a price point. I, I just said, if you're renting, tell me, send me your rent in a chat, and I'll and I'll send you back information. Right. I'll tell you what you can buy at that price point. Right. So trying to see if I can find me. I don't know where it is. So I'm not going to worry about. It. Um. So the first thing I did was I said, just tell me your rent. Guess what? And I and I did North Jersey was my target market, right? Because that was, by the way, AI, right? And then there's tactical, right? What's the difference between tactical and AI? Anybody want to guess? Artificial intelligence. Right? What am I doing with artificial intelligence? I'm telling Facebook, hey man, if there's somebody that looks like this, smells like this, tastes like this, and is in this tribe, what we talked about, right? Remember we talked about this? Really intelligent information, right? Mm-hmm. If those guys are in this tribe and they're renting and they're spending X amount of dollars and they're living in this area and they, they want to buy a home, I want to know about it and I want to show them my ad. So that's the artificial part. Here's the better part. There were 65 of them that came in. You guys ever heard of a bot? Mm-hmm. Any idea what a bot is? That? Alicia, you just went, uh-huh. What's a bot? It will um, automate contact or answers. Or response. response. Right? Do you guys know that on Facebook you can actually put up like a business page and if the guy says, hey, I want to rent for this, you can actually send them stuff. You can email them. You can text them. You can put them into a spreadsheet. You could also say, hey, by the way, what what exactly can somebody turn on the TV? And I'll put this up in a second. And James, you're a little, a little bit of a disadvantage, but you know what the conversations look like anyway. Uh, you have to go into the Just go into HDMI. This one too? Yeah. Teams too. Uh, Is that balancing up here? It should show. It should yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. yeah, James, I don't know if you want to have a short line. That's no, right. Um, can we have our line of succession in the office yeah, right. segment? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even though James is yeah. unconscious for a it's month, back to the group. Yeah.
It usually shows it. Oh, wait. No, it's not. You're not plugged. I'm probably not plugged in. You gotta plug it. You gotta make sure that that's plugged in. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Make sure it's a white wire plug. Make it sense. Yeah, usually it'll show up. Usually, if I heard something. No, it's not that one. Uh oh. They it's probably undid it. Bio. <coughs> Evil. Don't worry about it. All right, so, <laughs> all right, so, 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 who are we going after? We talked about that, right? Renters. Right. What? What are we looking for? We're looking for a lead. We're looking for a contact. We're looking for a conversation. Right? When? Ideally, what are we looking? Immediately. <laughs> ASAP. Let me ask you a question. If I said that I'm going to do something in three to six months, would you do it? Would you pay attention? Sure. Yeah. I did it in a year. Would you pay attention? Yeah. Can I ask you a dopey question? Kelly, you've been doing this how many years? Yeah. 20 years. Do you have any plans on doing anything else in the next 12 months besides suicide mortgages? She no. doesn't make money. She's going to have to. Right. So, <laughs> in my, you know, I always, I have a saying, and, and James has probably heard me say this to people on the phone. Listen, if you're not ready to do something right now, I get it. All I want you to do is talk to James. Well, we're not ready to do something now. I understand it. Let's just see what where we're at so we can get a baseline. And listen, I have an 11 and 13 year old daughters. Even if I wanted to retire, I'm not going anywhere. So I'm going to be here. Whether it's now or 10 years from now, I'm probably still going to be here. God willing. Right? So, and by the way, what happens if the guy says, I'm ready to do something now? I'm going to call him. What am I going to call him with? A telephone. I'm not going to bottom. I'm not going to text him. I'm going to call him. Pick up the Pick up the phone. By the way, I, I was telling the give work the guy who works for me, Krill. I said, you know, God bless you, Krill. He's a little analytical. He's like, well, you know, should I, you think they're at dinner? If you're doing that, I said, listen, if you were dying and you called the first aid squad, do you think they're going to question, like, are you at dinner? You want us to come when you're done? Or no, I'm dying. Can you come now? Well, you know, we're thinking about it. Yeah, don't think about it. Just get in the car and come. Okay? When? If they aren't ready to do it now, what are we going to do? We're going to put them in some kind of a follow campaign. It doesn't have to be you. It can run simultaneously. Once you build it, it runs. Right? It's kind of like having a kid. Once you start feeding it, it actually grows up. And you, whether you want it to or not, it's going to run. Right? Where? In your, in your space, do you care where? For the most part? You can write everywhere. You can write everywhere. Right. Do you care about prices? Do you care about credit and all that? Sure. Can you dial that in with? So when I first started running the ad, I said, just tell me if you're renting and tell me how much your rent is in whatever you want to be. By the way, I did that with the bot automatically. Then I started to chat them, and then I started to leave, I don't know if you know this, in Facebook Messenger, you can leave an audio message. You can actually hit a button and say, hey, I just want to let you know I didn't forget about you. I'm not a bot. I'm a real person. Send me your phone number and I'll call you. Right now, you all of a sudden you get in your Facebook Messenger, you see a little thing that says, "Oh, message," and it says, "Hey, man, I'm, not, I'm a real person. Send me your phone number." What do you think you're gonna do? You're laughing. Guess what? Of the five people I did that with, three of them sent me back their phone number, called me back, and one of them sent me back the phone number and said, "I'll call you in a minute. I'm in a meeting." Hmm. So that's an 85, 90 percent ratio. Right? Why? I'm going to get to this in a second. Me and Mr. Chu are going to go through an exercise. How? How am I going to get in touch with them? Hmm? Telephone. Telephone. What do we know about Facebook and uh, Facebook Messenger? It does chip on. <laughs> Guess what? They don't give me their phone number. You can message them. I could no. I could actually go in a messenger and hit their hit their profile, and if their phone number is in there, call them right from there. Hey, how you doing, man? Yeah, right? right? That is so creepy. <laughs> it is creepy. Guess what? I'm not a secret agent. 
You have a, you have one of my, you have one of my business cards, by the way. I want you to read something from it. Can you read what it says in orange? Say that really loud. By the way, any idea what the highest paid into the highest paid occupation is in the world? Salesperson. Highest paid occupation in the world is a salesperson. Excuse my French. I am proud to be a salesperson. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not trying to hide it. I'm not trying to sneak up on anybody. I am a salesperson, and I'm proud of it. So you should be too, by the way, if you want to make a living. Yeah. My wife, when she first met me, said, oh, my God, doesn't your phone ever stop ringing? And I said, do you like when the credit cards work? <laughs> Seriously. Okay. So, Mr. Chu, let's talk about why. So, how many people, if I give you a lead and the guy says, yeah, here's my rent, here's my rent, and here's the area I want to be in, I want to be in, I want to be in Morristown, and I'm paying $2,000 a month, right? What do you say? How do you respond? I'll give you a hint. What's our pattern? What's our neural linguistic programming pattern that Sean always parks on and beats on? And Michael actually hit and did it by uh, he did it, and I didn't even ask him to do it. Repeat, affirm. No, close. Repeat. 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 Approve. Approve. Affirm. And then ask a question. Ask another question. Not a question, but another question. By the way, when I ask another question, am I going to ask a yes or no question? No. 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 Do I want to rent? No. Do I want to buy? No. Yes. No. So how do I change that from, hey, oh my God, you want to be in Morristown, right? Awesome. What is awesome, by the way? Approving. Kind of. It's what they call a tie down. It's a mini close. I'm approving it. What I'm actually doing is I'm doing this pattern in this sentence, which is kind of like doing that pattern on steroids. Okay? I'm approving it. I'm saying, oh, great. Right? And I'm going again and I'm saying, Morristown is an awesome town. Low taxes. Why would I say maybe low taxes? It'll help keep their budget. They'll keep their budget down and their rent thing, right? So my my focus, remember, our conversation started with the conversation of rent thing. So what am I trying to get all my conversation to do? I want the conversation to point to that. I want it to be in that same conversation. I don't want to talk about investing. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about buying. I'm talking about renting. I'm talking about getting you away from renting. By the way, people that are renting are going to own, right? Why are they going to own? Why do they want to own usually? What were we taught as kids? Come to the United States and buy a home because it's the. American dream. Hey, say it loud. Do you believe it? Yes. I'm going to prove to you that it is. Ready? You're mortgage lenders, right? Yes. What's the benefit of me buying a house? Tax rates. What else? Build equity. Build equity. What else? What if I said to you I can increase your income by probably seven or eight percent this year? Instantly? Would you be interested? Bullshit. You'd be all over it. You would be all over it. Right? Think about it. And by the way, I'm getting passionate because this is one of my favorite conversations. Okay? And Dave's like, yeah, right. Just tell us. <laughs> Mr. Kisar. You got my ears perked up. I'm waiting here. So watch. I get Mr. Chu. Hey James, how are you? I'm oh, great. All right, awesome, man. Hey, you know, I, I appreciate your responding to I appreciate your responding to my Facebook post. Hey, you know, I, I noticed that you said you're looking you're looking at Roxbury, right? Correct. And you're looking right now. You're spending what? Twenty five hundred. Twenty two hundred. Twenty two hundred. Okay. Is that gross or is that is that like with is that your total budget for housing or could no, you afford I pay more? My own you pay your own utilities, but could you afford more than twenty two hundred, or is that just what you're paying? No, I. Pretty much want to stay to it. You want to stay there. All right. Great. By the way, um, is it just Roxbury or do you want to be all over the place? I'm open to it right now. But you, you want to just be in Roxbury, Roxbury, right? Work with me, James. You yes. want to be in Roxbury? Yes. Roxbury. Holy Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <you're going> over. <laughs> so, James, right now, you and your wife are paying 2200 How long have you been rented? Well, you know what? How long have you guys been renting? We own. 
Okay. Let's see. <laughs> you were? No. Okay. How long have you been writing games? Uh, about six years. Six years. And let's six say for, for six years, right? I'm going to guess that it hasn't been 2,200 for six years. No, we started with 1,500. So 1,500, 2,200, let's say 2,000, maybe 1,800. Mm -hmm. right, so we're going to use 1,800 just to be safe. Okay? So 1,800 times 12, Dave, you're my math guy. Mm -hmm. 12,000 plus another 8 is 90, 90, 86. So 12,086 is 20,600, right? Times 6, so 120. 120, 100, and, uh, 156. Am I close? I think you're off now. Six years? 20,000 times 6? 120, so 120 plus 36. 120, 126. 126? Yeah. No, no. 129,6. 129,6. Who's got a calculator? Okay. Hey, Kelly, what's, what's 129,6 times 0? What is it? Say it loud. Zero. Zero. Hey, Kelly, were you aware, Mr. Chu, were you aware that your tax benefit right now is zero? Like right now, you've paid you've paid your landlord $129,000. You sent one of his kids to school with $129,000. You're, you're like smiling. Guess what? Your tax benefit is zero when you're renting. Okay? Mr. Chu, if I was able to show you a house, okay, Matter of fact, I have a house in Roxbury right now. That house is three hundred and forty-three thousand nine hundred. And because we're all mortgage originators, we're going to do the math. What's the rate right now for a thirty-year fixed-rate mortgage? Nope. Three point one two five. On that FHA, yes. Oh, but wait a minute, Mr. Chu. Uh, do you have money to put down? Um. You have a 401k, IRA, and yeah, I got a, I got a retirement plan. You got a retirement plan. Do you think you have maybe ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars? Yeah, in more. Okay. Did, were you aware that that is one of the four criteria that you could take money out of your IRA, by the way, yes. to invest in a home? Yeah. What else can you do for an emergency, a physical or health emergency? You could also do it to buy a home. You could do it to go to school. There's one other criteria. I don't remember what it is. Retire. Um, yes, probably <laughs> no, hardship, hardship, hardship withdrawal. So let's just say, for argument's sake, I'm going to buy this house, and you know, I know you don't want to buy this particular house, but I'm just going to use that as an example, okay, Mr. Chu? So let's just say, for argument's sake, I'm going to put down. Were you aware that you could buy a house with three and a half percent down? No, I wasn't. Were you aware that you could buy a house with zero down in some markets? No, I was not. You know that? Is, are you guys aware of that, by the way? In some markets, you can actually buy a house with no money down. And it's the suburban, what is it? The urban, urban, it's um, it's like, what is it? USDA. USDA. So let's just say, for argument's sake, though, we're going to do an FHA loan. How much down is that? Three and a half. Three and a half percent. What's three and a half percent on 343.9? Well, 12. 12.036. is our down payment, right? How much are the taxes on this house? 72. So 72. 600. How much is the how much is the insurance we said? 100 bucks. 100 bucks a month. Let's call it so it's 1200. Right? So right now, if I take this and I make it monthly, right? You need a pity payment. If I take if I take this, and I also need PMI, right? Mm -hmm. The pity is fourteen twenty two. So PMI. So let's just do this for a second, though. Forty three nine. Fourteen forty two. How much am I fine? How much am I? How much am I financing at ninety ninety seven and a half percent? Oh, I didn't uh, do the. Uh, three thirty one eight sixty three. The upfront. So three thirty one. Fourteen forty two ninety two. Well, 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 wait. Let's just do this up here, please. <laughs> <laughs> How much at Cali? Kelly? 331? 863. 863. How much if I pay it? At 3.1, 3.125. 1442. 1442. 1442. 95. Let's just do 1443. By the way, for those watching on this video when it's done, it's a real case scenario. How much is the um, how much is the PMI? Uh, I'm sorry, the um, the, uh, the PMI. 
About 238. 238. Hey, David, can you explain why we're paying PMI? Any loan that has less than 20% generally requires it. And what does PMI stand for? Uh, private mortgage insurance. Primary mortgage on FHA mortgage insurance premium. Mortgage insurance premium. So, um, and then how much are the taxes? If I got 7,200 a month? 600. 600. We don't have the uh, upside in there. Oh, hold on. All right. So, I got. What is that? <laughs> I got one. I got seven, eight. All right. I got a six. I got a two. It's an eight. Eight and four is 12. All right. 2281. Is that right? The insurance. Oh, I'm sorry. Plus the insurance. Well, let me just put insurance. It's $100 a month. How much was the payment? 23 80 80 So, by the way, you said, oh, you know, I can only afford up to 2200 a month, right? So, anybody know what my benefit is going to be? So, on the first three to five years, taxes and the taxes, tax, the, the interest on a loan is how much of a loan? How much of a payment? 98% or more in the first three to five years. What else? Insurance. I mean, interest. On this particular case, it's not more than $10,000 of the state of New Jersey. Thank you very much for the, camp, the administration changing that. Not. But it's under 10 grand. So how much of that is deductible? 100%. If you're, it's 100% deductible. Say that aloud, Mr. Two. 100% of 7200 So if I'm at a 38% tax bracket, would you agree with me that if somebody can afford to buy this house, they probably have a 38% tax bracket? Right? Mm -hmm. So what's 38% times that number? 38%? 38 percent times twenty three eighty. Nine hundred and five dollars. Nine hundred and five dollars. What's that number of times twelve? Ten eight fifty two. Okay. I'm gonna just do something now. This is where it gets really fun. Everybody remember? American dream, right? By the way, I'm a realtor. I'm not the mortgage guy. I'm just kind of going to present this, and I'm going to give them to you, and you're going to validate it. What happens when you validate it? When they go to you and they say, hey, my realtor said I could do this. So if I tell them and I ask you a question and you answer me, guess what? You don't believe it because I prompted you to answer me that question. And if you... If I tell you that this is what's going to happen, you don't agree. You don't. You don't believe it. You might kind of believe it, but you don't fully believe it. But if you told, if you call James and say, "Hey, my realtor said that I could do this, this, and this. Is this true?" Now you said it, and then he validates it. Guess what? It's like gospel. It's not. It's not true. It is like on steroids, because he just validated. He's the man, right? So here's how this works now. Our monthly, how much was the how much was the money to get into this house? It's three forty three, right? About well, thirteen thousand plus closing. Plus closing costs, which is about how much of a percent? What's a number that we could use? All park at ten thousand. No, a percentage. Oh, percentage. All park two and a half, three. Two and a half. Two and a half. So our two and a half percent closing cost is how much? Eight eighty five. Eighty six hundred. Eighty-six hundred dollars. All right. Right. Plus, how much out of pocket for the three and a half percent down? Yeah, twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Yeah. So twenty thousand dollars. So I need twenty thousand dollars up front. Right. By the way, if I said to you that I'm going to invest twenty thousand dollars this year, okay, and I want to get. Ten thousand five eight ten thousand eight fifty I want to get a fifty percent return on my money. Guaranteed. I want a fifty percent return on my money guaranteed. Do you know if I call my stockbroker and I say, Hey, 
I want a 50% guarantee on my money next month. You know what he's going to tell me? You're out of your mind. What have you been smoking? Guess what? That is the American dream all day long. How hard is it to call somebody and say, hey, by the way, are you tired of renting? I'm sorry, I'm getting a little passionate because in my head, those numbers make sense all day long. Even if you're not a smart guy. So here's the funny thing is, now when you're talking to that person on Facebook and you're saying, hey, I can get you a loan. I can help you to stop renting a box. Is that what you're really doing? What do you think the average income is of a person that's going to buy this house? Probably seventy-five to eighty-five thousand. Seventy-five to eighty-five thousand. Let's call it eighty. How much is how much is ten thousand ten thousand eight hundred fifty divided by eighty? Twelve percent. Twelve percent. By the way, how much tax how much tax do I pay on that money? How much tax do I pay on that money and I'm getting a 20% to the federal tax? No. No, no it's like 40 to the federal the rest is all that's the money I'm getting back from my taxes. Oh the that ten thousand dollars? That ten thousand dollars I'm getting back from my taxes. So I'm paying zero tax on that money. So that's like getting a clean twelve thousand a twelve percent return on my money or getting an increase of twelve percent on my income. Period. With zero tax. You know, if I give you a 10% increase in your salary, you've got to give Uncle Sam 4% of it. And whoever else, call it 50%. I'm, you know, I'm just going to use round numbers, say 4%. You show me someplace else where I can get a 50% return on my money or, and or increase my salary by 10%. Just by buying a home. By the way, does somebody have to live somewhere? Does the place they're renting have a front door? Does it have a bathroom? Does it have a kitchen? Does the place they're going to buy have a front door? Have a bathroom? Have a kitchen? What's the difference? Oh, by the way, we're going to give you 10% more on your salary this year to buy it. Anybody paying attention? Anybody, anybody with a little scared because Charles was flipping out? <laughs> by the way, I sold more houses on the phone. I, yesterday I did a workout. I did it. My kids thought I was crazy, right? I did the 75 work. 45 days inside, 45 days out, 45 minutes outside. I said to these guys, I go, I'm going out. I got to go for a run. They were going for a walk. They're like, what are you crazy? I sent them a text. I had my, my banana hat jack hat on, <laughs> my coat. And what was I doing? I put my headphones on. You took Rosie. On. Yeah, and I did, yeah. I did my follow up call. And you took Rosie. Right. No, not, not on that one. <laughs> this morning I did. But I did my follow up calls while I was walking around for 45 minutes. Then what did I do? Then I went back downstairs. I got a Peloton. So I did the inside workout 45 minutes on the Peloton. I took my laptop, put it on the front of the screen, and started calling the people back from the Facebook that inquired. One of the girls said, you know, Sean, our credit score is probably about a 580. My husband just changed jobs from being a chef to being an electrician. He's making about $1,000 a week, but he's only been there five months. And because of my conversation with James for 100 years, I kind of said, well, I'll have somebody give you a call, but it may take a little time for you to get to a point where he's been there for about a year to get some validity in his salary. Maybe not. I'll have to ask them, and we'll, we'll talk to one of these guys tomorrow. I'll let you know. She said, okay. I said, do you work? She goes, yeah. As a matter of fact, I actually serve. And I said, well, where'd you serve? And she goes, no, I serve at the Black Horse. I go, oh, I might even know you. We start talking. Turns out on, on she has a young child who's getting ready to go to school. Saturday and Sunday, she serves, and he watches the child. I said to her, I said, hey, by the way, have you considered a real estate career because you're great on the phone, you've got a great personality, and you're really a lot of fun to talk to. What's interesting, though, is, is that that conversation comes from one thing. Kelly, you, did, you talked about it. You didn't even realize it, though. Before we started working together, right? We talked about this. I talked about this with Quill and Roy, who worked with me. So, Roy, you guys met. He's like 18, 19 years old, right? Smart kid, very humble, very, you know, smart, really super smart, but willing to do whatever. Quill, on the other hand, 24 years old. So, Quill, I say to him, hey, do this, do this, do this. And 
follow up and have these people give them this information. Okay, he's going to go out and show them properties now, right? He's got a list of three properties he's going to show them. We sit down and get ready for the appointment the night before. He shows me a spreadsheet that's about this big, <laughs> right? All of a sudden, I thought he was me for a minute. And I was like, holy crap. And I looked at him and I go, first of all, people buy emotion. They buy excitement. They don't buy numbers. They're buying a house. You forgot. This is not, this is not a math equation. They're buying a home, man. Let them buy a home. Right? So I, and I, you know, Krill has a tendency of being like super analytical. Shocking. And me and Kelly talked about this. You guys haven't heard me say, talk about the filter, right? I say to you, the sky is blue. And depending on your filter, you run through your filter and go, I've heard, I've heard other people call it blue, but his shirt is blue, but it's really not blue. It's like blue gray. And the sky, it really isn't, it's not blue today, it's gray. It's grayish green. Right? And why? It's because your filter of, First of all, 18 years, 24 years, right? So Krill is on a conference call with me and Roy. And Krill says, being helpful, says, you know, Sean, you might want to tell Roy what you told me about getting out of your head and just, just going with it and getting in motion. Don't worry about overanalyzing it. And I said, you know what, Krill, i got to be honest with you. Roy doesn't have that problem. And also the phone got dead quiet. And I said, by the way, don't take that the wrong way. It's, your, it's not you. It's not, your, it's not personal. I said, let me explain. Roy's filter? <laughs> He's got 25% less crap in his skull. He doesn't know if it's good or bad. He's just already, he's just going, man. He's moving. Okay? Krill, on the other hand, he's got 25% more crap in his head. So when you say to him, hey, go do this, he runs it through an additional 25%. So Kelly and I were talking, and she said, you know, when I met you, I would run it through the filter. And go, well, you know, and I would look it all over and go, hey, how do I do this again? Right? And wonder if I can actually do it because my my other voice, remember I was talking about that? And I said to Kelly, I go, it took a, one of my mentors and coaches for me to say, that voice in your head, that other ego, the one that says, don't do it, do it, don't do it, do it, right? Our tendency is, what is our tendency to do when someone tells us you're talking to yourself? What are we trying to do as kids? Be quiet. Oh my God, don't acknowledge that. Oh, just shut up and leave me alone. Right? Oh my God, I can do this when you're alone. I'm good at this. I know what I'm doing. And you fight with it. You literally have a mental fist fight gymnastics in your head. Any idea how much energy it takes to do that? And how much distraction it is for you? Until you can go, hey, dude. I know it's raining now. I know it's 45 minutes, but it's not going to kill me. And oh, by the way, whenever I'm done, I feel better. You'll feel better, I promise, man. Just go with it. Let me do this. So now the conversation is not let me fight them. Let's align with each other. Let's align with that voice in our head. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. What do I mean by that? So here's, here's what's comfortable is being uncomfortable. Let me ask you a question. If I gave you information, if I gave you people to talk to, could you be excited about telling them about the opportunity to buy a home versus renting, knowing what you know? Mm -hmm. Could you do that presentation for the most part? Mm -hmm. Could you do half of it, the part that's important? Listen, I'm analytical. I tell, I'm the first one to tell you, but that's my job to sell them on that. Your job is to validate it. Yes, as a matter of fact, he's right. Let me show you the numbers. Matter of fact, we have this thing called the we have this thing called the good faith statement. We're gonna send it to you in writing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So guess what? Anybody have any questions, first of all? Really? You can all do this in your eyes closed. Don't don't say yes. Because I'm gonna give you a test. So I have to get through my eyes closed. Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> so I have I have I don't know 15 or about 15 leads that came in on this ad. By the way, dude, we we ran that ad. I got 60 inqui 60 inquiries. Do you think how much how much is 16 on 60? By the way, why am I using numbers with you guys? That's what you do for a living. Numbers are what your business is, right? 
So it's easier for me to talk to you in that language, but also because it's a it's a numbers game. And we're in the process of in the, in the next two weeks, I'm going to show you what a real game looks like. Because there's a concept called gamification. So what is gamification? What people in Harvard figured out is if I go into a sales environment and I make a game out of it, it will increase productivity by 30 to 40 percent. Why? You're not playing for the money. You're playing to show up. You're playing for your ego. You're playing to win. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. There's, it's, it's, you guys ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy? It's called the needs, needs-based hierarchy. If anybody took psychology in school, yeah. right? Anybody know what's at the top? Food, food, shelter. And then it's money, right? No, money's way down here, by the way. Any idea what's next? Is recognition, self-actualization. It's being able to validate in your head that you're worth you're worth it. You can do something to accomplish it. You know, I, I want to kind of make a comment about this. You see this exercise that Sean just put in today, right? Now, he's not even in the mortgage business, right? What he's doing is he's drumming his business in the real estate business. Because let me ask you, as long as I know Sean, he has never been a buyer in the He focused on selling. Right? You can listen to it and know how to do it. <laughs> right? So he focused on selling selling. You normally can't have buyer each, and that's why you hire these other people to handle the buyers. So one of the things that Sean's really teaching you in this class is even though he doesn't do it, he knows how to fish for business. That's he knows how to find it. That's the conversation. This is yesterday. the farming, by the way. Mm-hmm. If you take a look at this, right? And he just did a home buying seminar, buy versus rent. David, you and I talked about that. You want to do a buy versus rent in Spanish. Mm-hmm. I bet you he could do it in Spanish. David, okay. David when we were getting check. ready for the meeting, he went into Total Expert and said, here, let me pull up the presentation. I, go, I, don't, I don't want that. I don't need that. So my point to you is this, right? Look, you got to think outside the box. Then in that, it doesn't matter how the business is coming from, where is it coming from. You know, the conversation, by the way, when you talk to somebody, you know, I talk about to realtors all the time. Let's do a home buyer seminar to create additional buyer. You know what we always said that there's a value proposition, what can you bring to the realtors? Mm-hmm. Right? At the end of the day, it's not what, right? You don't walk into, remember when we talk about this, right? This is what you were doing before when you're networking. Hi, my name is Kelly Young from US Bank. US Bank is the number five lender in the whole country. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody what happens? Cares. Nobody cares. Everybody just yes. it. Now you actually have this, hey, what can we do together to help you? What do you need? You're asking questions, right? So you're, you're trying to find out what business or people are looking for. And believe it or not, what you need is a partner where you could develop, okay, a way to capture more business. Not everybody say, let me ask you a few. Sean, he said, what it is? This is a project. Now, what I have to do as a mortgage banker and work with Sean, I have to create, how can I say it? We have to create a, oh, a, a way so this way we can work together. A way to so, service it. So the instruction, right? So what, what, what Sean says, hey, can you call, um, can you find out who do you want to work, who do you want me to sign these leads to? That was a question he asked me. Well, I says, okay, assign it to Alicia. I'd love to assign it to Ashley. Assign it to Kelly. Depending on where the location is, what we're looking at, and these are the leads. And let me answer you. Here it is, right? Here's the purpose of that. I'm going to take the leads on out myself, follow up on it, and do what I need to do. But right now, my concern is with you guys, all of you guys here sitting in this room to get up and running, get to the next production level. Once the machines run, by the way, do you? And by the way, this conversation for me is not everybody's wow, how the hell is Maggie doing this much application? He's a number one unit producer in a 122 unit closed transaction last mm-hmm. year. How does she do it? She was my assistant. She did the same structure that David you're in. She did the same structure that you in. Same structure. By the way, you remember when she was working with Peggy Mamma? Mm-hmm. She wasn't that type of producer. Mm-hmm. She was lucky she closed $16 million. Mm-hmm. Okay? What happened is, from over the years of coaching her, showing her what need to do, she 
grow up. She realized, okay, this is not working. This is working. How can we continue to bring value? Now she brings value to her realtors. She had built, by the way, a great referring network that is constantly funneled leads. Right? So, yeah. Let me show you guys. The network is a work of art. It's a work, it's a work it's, of art. Networking, sales is a work of art, art, right? At the end of the day, it's what you say, how you portray yourself. Master self first before you master the network, right? It's about what you say, what do you do. At the end of the day, it's a feedback. Sometimes you just go, listen. You hit the nail on the head. It's the feedback. You got to listen, right? So a lot of times, the, the, the reason why we're doing these sessions with you guys is, number one, is to help you, number one, close more transactions. You can be, it's a contact score, but if you get contacted in football, if you don't tag them down, the defense guy, what good is it? If I just touch him, right? I'm not going to get all the stat, the tackles. So same scenario as what we do, is we've got to be able to tackle them down and make the plays. And that's the difference that we have to do. And this, if you take a look at this, this is a home buyer seminar. Right. By, by the way, James, can you sit over here for a second? It's just just slide around. I got eyes in the back of my head. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> I only have two kids, so I only have one eye. Um, so I just want you guys to see this. Right? This ad. Right? By the way, when when I'm talking and I get passionate and I get excited, and people think like. Oh, but you're you're not really showing looking at the numbers. You what are you talking about? How do you how do you know if those numbers are accurate, Sean? What do I tell you, right? What did I tell you? How many how many how many dials did I tell you? Do you remember? It was six hundred, I think. How many how many dials to get to a contact? It was sixty. It's ten to one. Hundred dials gets you ten contacts on average. Okay, depending on what who you're calling, what time of day. How do I know? From doing it from doing it six to eight thousand times a year. <clears throat> 25 years. So what do I know about this? This ad, okay, right now this ad is running, right? I saw it on the, on the 10th, okay? I redid the ad actually. My average cost per, per look right now, $2.50. But by the way, how many do I need in order to have a conversation, right? So wow, you know, Sean, that's, that's $2.50 elite. lead. That's great. Oh my God, that's huge. Yeah, well, the challenge is, though, is I would consider a lead somebody who's going to make a buying selling decision in the next 30, 60, 90 days and or is willing to give me more information like a phone number or an email address, right? Mm -hmm. My assistant just did this for me and put it all in here. What she did is she took these conversations that I was having with people, okay? And I'll, I'll give you the one that, like, the girl, the girl that, um, she was calling um, the MLF out of the real estate commission today. Okay. By the way, even he said, even though he says I don't work with buyers, 20 minutes yesterday I was on the phone with this girl doing that presentation and then saying to her, by the way, if you can't really afford a house that, that much, maybe if I show you how to make an extra three thousand dollars a month by doing one transaction, you can afford a bigger house. And all of a sudden, roof perked up like a bird dog. Mm -hmm. Right. So here's the here's the start of the conversation. Right. Call an agent, right? When, when are you looking to move? 12 months. What's the best phone number? By the way, here's what here's what this says. We're excited to help you in your real estate needs. Do you think I'm genuinely excited mm -hmm. about helping somebody to get another 10% in their pocket? Yeah, that's not bullshit. By the way, remember I said to you, you can do a voice message? Did you hear what I said? I didn't say I'm gonna have my I'm gonna have my lender stalk you and get you qualified before I can take you out. I said no. I'm giving them something. I'm saying, hey, let me see if I can get you some down payment assistance. What's the likelihood of that? Well, Probably zero. Yeah. <laughs> but guess what? I'm worth it's worth to try. And by the way, what am I trying to do with all this crap? So here's Krill. Here's the Krill um, Roy conversation, right? Roy. Okay, great. I get it. You just want me to have a conversation. Krill, 
So you want me to send an email to these guys? You want me? So why don't I do this? I'm going to send that that email flow campaign to myself so I can see it. And it's going to take it's going to take 12 months for me to get all the emails from that flow. So I should be ready to get going in about 24 months because all that all those emails, texts, and all that, right? No. Does it matter what I'm saying to somebody? To a certain extent, yes. But what is the intention of all this stuff? Kelly said it a minute ago, which is, I just want to get in conversation with somebody. I'm not trying to have sex with them over the phone. I'm not trying to. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make an appointment to have a conversation with them to find out if they're qualified. Okay. So these guys. By the way, this guy. This guy's an agent. Hey, Sean. I have a buyer who's looking. I have a buyer. I have a buyer who's looking in the area, and I was wondering maybe I can help him with the programs we're using. 